And uh, she says that as PPE stockpiles dwindle, Tuskegee University faculty gather surplus masks, gloves, and other equipment for use by healthcare workers and first responders battling uh, COVID-19 in rural underserved medical communities such as Tuskegee. And she also provides a link, which I guess will redirect you to the actual story. Uh, the same person has a, a comment for Joe Turnham, who says that lots of people who applied to work for 2020 census have never heard back nor been hired. What can the city, county, and MCEDA do to help more people from Macon County get hired for census jobs? One way to make sure we get counted is to make sure some of us get hired to actually do the counting, and she has since corrected herself. Her question about the census is actually for Dr. Brooks, which is a perfect segue to our next speaker, Dr. Jacqueline Brooks. Dr. Well, good evening, everyone. Hey. It is certainly a pleasure to be here with you uh, in a new normal uh, type of setting and venue, but the attendance is great. So that's a wonderful thing to see. Uh, as you well know, schools are in a different uh, type of meeting other than physical meeting, but we are still open. As of April 6th, 2020 in the state of Alabama, all public schools reopened in a non-traditional manner. And depending on where you are in the state, of course, that can have a different definition. Each of our 138 school systems had to submit an academic continuity plan of how we would approach learning in our communities. And in Macon County, we put together a hybrid model that consists of a learning schedule that tries to address the whole child. And with that being said, it includes some time for outdoor activities. It includes some time for family time. It includes time for reading. It also includes time to work in an academic learning platform. And all of this can be seen, of course, on our website at www.makingk12.org. I do have some uh, slides, but what I'll do is just send the link and at your uh, own time, you'll be able to review those if you'd like to look at them. So we did reopen on the 6th in the non-traditional manner and we had to deploy several types of resources. Uh, one of the things we had to do was to pass out iPads in the community and that helped in a number of homes. However, in many of our rural communities, if you had an iPad, you simply had a brick because we did not have the connectivity needed uh, with Wi-Fi, broadband, uh, high-speed internet, and those kinds of things. So we immediately began to reach out to our partners and governmental officials to look at what we could do in terms of establishing hotspots or creating connectivity in some of our rural communities. And so uh, one of our uh, network affiliates, uh, who is Nelson McLeod of the Shorter Community, works with AT&T. Uh, Nelson contacted us and offered us some hotspots through AT&T, which we have received and deployed into some of our rural communities. Uh, Verizon has all of their uh, MiFi's on back order. Uh, Los Angeles Public Schools ordered 150,000 uh, MiFi's at the onset of the pandemic, and the rest of us are just kind of in the queue uh, waiting for some more to be uh, manufactured and shipped. But uh, AT&T was able to help us. We were also able to put a cradle point device on a few school buses, and we were able to uh, gain access to our Trina manufacturing lab. That's a mobile lab that also has connectivity with it. So these particular resources have given us more connectivity in our community than we've ever had. So that's kind of one of the positives out of this COVID-19 crisis is that we have expanded our digital footprint, um, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, the digital divide in our communities, especially across the Black Belt, create uh, inequity in our homes based on zip codes. And so we've tried to mitigate that. And our learning platform is accessible also by cellular data. So there are some communities that don't have high-speed internet, 
but the cell phone towers are a pretty good strength and signal reception that students can still work on those devices using cellular data. Uh, and then the third option that we used in our hybrid model, of course, is just the uh, old-fashioned, good, trusted paper and pencil model. Uh, the paper and pencil model, of course, does not have the interaction uh, that the other two models have. So we provided a list of nearby hotspots to each of our parents in the community that they could at least try to get to a few times a week. And we were able to get those set up with our county commissioners at our uh, community centers. We also reached out to some of our business partners uh, in the shorter area, Love's Truck Stop and uh, McDonald's. Uh, indicated that we could use their uh, hot spots in the city of Tuskegee. We have the uh, town square, the library, uh, the courthouse. We have some churches who offer their uh, hot spots for use. In uh, the town of Nova Saga, we have the entire downtown, 4,000 square feet, has connectivity access. And then at the Prairie Farm Center, we have access. So between that and the hot spots, we have come a long way uh, with connectivity. We also have been rolling out uh, 4,000 meals a day. And uh, I know that seems like a huge number, but when you think about some of our larger systems like Miami-Dade and Los Angeles, it's actually not a really large number, but for us, it's a huge undertaking to uh, roll out 4,000 meals a day. And the reason we roll out 4,000 meals a day is because we make one run. So we take out a brunch rather than a breakfast and a lunch, we combine the two. So when students get their meal bags each day, they have both breakfast and lunch in them. And uh, two weeks ago, we rolled back the Friday delivery and we deliver four meals on Thursday uh, to try to limit some of the uh, contact that we have in trying to stop the spread. Currently, we're examining what some of our uh, sister systems have done in Georgia, which is to go to a one week, uh, one day a week uh, meal delivery. Uh, that's a very uh, interesting task because it means you have to take out a gallon of milk per household uh, each Monday if that's your day. And so supply and demand again come into play in trying to see if we can get uh, Borden's, our milk vendor, uh, who has our milk bid to be able to do that. So we're looking at that, but right now we're rolling with meals uh, four days a week, trying to make sure that all of our young people uh, stay fed and get nutritious meals during this time. When school ends, which will now be May 29th, we will continue to feed. So we plan to feed throughout the summer and until kids are able to get back uh, physically connected uh, to schools. Before we got out of school, we were actively engaged in working on census activities. And of course, uh, once we went into the COVID crisis, uh, the census uh, responsibilities that we had uh, lost their priority in the sense of urgency for us. And so we've now come back full circle now that we have gotten our academic programs up and running and gone back to look at where we are with the census and what we need to do. So we have been in contact with a number of uh, people who have been uh, beating the uh, bushes, trying to get folks to complete census. And what uh, Jeffrey was sharing with you is the project that uh, the group uh, met with me on and that uh, we designed a flyer and um, a poster to go out and it's circulating on social media. And we ask that everyone continue to share that. And it's called Drop Everything and Be Counted. And indeed, it is on May 5th at noon. Now, this doesn't supersede or undersede any other efforts. It works in tandem with what we already have going on. But because parents now have connectivity, they have devices, they are using their cellular data more efficiently, we will be using our robocall system to encourage parents to use these same devices that we have loaned to the children for census purposes so that we can get the most bang for our buck while we have this big uh, uh, play and uptick in connectivity going on in the community. And so again, that's May 5th at noon, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you have not done your census, drop everything and be counted. Very similar to drop everything and read, intentional and uh, very, very deliberate. 
Uh, I believe it's Dr. McConnell's name that uh, uh, Karen shared with me. I know it's a, a person who, who has um, some medical background regarding PPEs, because one of the things that we have going on as we look at the reopening of schools in Alabama and states across the US is whether or not we will be able to safely do so due to supply and demand with things like Lysol, face masks, hand sanitizers, antibacterial soap. So for example, on any given day with the meals we feed, we, are, we have 80 people who are actively on site. And so if 80 people a day use a consumable mask times four days a week, you can multiply 80 people times four, and that's about 320 masks in a week. And that doesn't include the number of gloves that we need, uh, the amount of Lysol and hand sanitizer. Um, we're currently running temperature scans on our employees as they come in. Our health services staff is doing that to make sure um, that they are not exhibiting any symptoms. Of course, we know there's another whole um, realm of asymptomatic issues, but we're trying to deal with it from a symptomatic process to make sure our workers are safe when they're preparing food and when they're taking food out to uh, our homes and to our, to our families. Uh, and then the other big thing that, of course, everyone in the community wants to know about is what are we going to do about graduation? And it's kind of a wait and see because we wait to get our orders and protocol from Governor Ivey's office, as well as the state health officer, Scott Harris, and the Alabama Department of Education, Dr. Eric Mackey. So once the three of them put their minds together and listen to their advisors and what health officials are saying, then they will give us more information on what we can do. Currently, we're being told that uh, having a drive-through ceremony or a social distancing ceremony is not permitted. We will have graduation on the predetermined dates. We just don't know what form it will be brought to you uh, yet, but it will be brought to the community um, to commemorate and to highlight uh, the successes of our young people in the Macon County school system. Thank you guys so much. And if there are any questions, uh, you can certainly let me know. Um, you just gave us a very thorough uh, summary of what's going on in the school system and there is a question about whether this model will be ongoing through the fall and a second question as to how promotions to the next grade will be handled. Okay well in our academic continuity plan again if you go to www.makingk12.org and I think I don't know how to share my screen in this particular venue, but I'll just give you that again, www.makingk12.org. There are two plans there, and one is the academic continuity plan. The other is the parent welcome packet. In the academic continuity plan, we were given, uh, again, guidance by the state to every school system. And that guidance says that students who are senior high school students could have their grades closed out as of the end of the third nine weeks. So the only students who are seniors that have to continue to work are those who are also in college, they're dual in, enrolled, so they have to follow the uh, guidance of the colleges with whom they are associated. And students who may not have been passing a class may have to engage in credit recovery. So some of those seniors may uh, have needed to continue to work. With our K through 11th grade students, we have an either or grading mechanism. So either we will use the third nine weeks grade or the fourth nine weeks grade, depending on which of the two is the higher grade, which is why we're continuing to enrich. And we will average those as we always do across four nine weeks and those that are successfully passing will be promoted. Those who are not passing will be accelerated and remediated through the summer in the hope that they can be promoted by the fall. So we will continue a virtual summer program through uh, June and July. It will not be the same courses that we're in currently. These will end in May. In June, we plan to pick up enriching courses such as elementary Spanish and some other things that we actually can't normally do 
uh, during the year in our physical setting, but we now have the ability to do in the virtual setting. So we hope to bring uh, children some really engaging opportunities. We have already heard from Alabama State University. They have already set up their virtual dual enrollment classes for the summer. We are awaiting Tuskegee University in Trenum uh, so that we'll know how those dual enrollment programs will run for the summer. We have heard from Camp Eye Care and Arms Rural Ministries who also provide summer camps. Uh, Eye Care Camp is going to do a backpack camp which will have all kinds of fun games and activities and backpacks that will be delivered to the students. We already have the bus system running, so we'll simply put the backpacks on the buses and get them to the homes. And Arms Rural Ministries is looking at a virtual uh, camp utilizing YouTube and some of the other technologies that we have to be able to deliver camps to the homes of our students. Dr. Brooks, that website that you gave us has been posted in the chat box. Thank you, Kelvin, for providing that. Are there any other questions for Dr. Brooks? Thank you. We will move Thank on. You. Oh, excuse me. Irving? Unmute your mic, please. Kelvin, will you unmute Irving McConnell's mic, please? Okay, I got Okay, is that better? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Brooks, um, if you talk to Margaret Frazier, um, and if it makes sense, um, I have a hot spot in, in, in my house in Tuskegee that's not being used. So if there's a way that the school system can use that house, uh, cause it's a large house and with rooms and tables. So if there's a way you all need to use that to put kids in there to learn and use the hotspot, I'm, I'm willing to offer that if that helps out. But just, just work it out with uh, Margaret Frazier. She'll get upset that I'm probably- I'll take care, care of it. it. I'll take care of it. Yeah. Me, yeah. And Dr. Me and Dr. Brooks are working on some projects together. I'll take care of it for you, Dr. Irving. Okay. 